Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to another Crimson Vow Draft here on the channel. My name is Nikolai, and in this video, I will be going pick by pick and play by play through a Crimson Vow Draft, talking through all of my decisions so you know what to do in your own Crimson Vow Drafts. Before I dive in, I want to remind you that if you enjoy this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel for more draft content, click that bell icon to get notified when I post future videos, and comment below with your questions, thoughts, and feedback. If you want to get a rundown of the format, you can check out my draft guide, which includes top commons, archetype overviews, and things of that nature. But let's get started here. Starting off with a rare that is not particularly powerful, Graph Reaver, uh, which is a card that is fine if you're a super aggressive deck, but oftentimes decks end up more mid-rangey, and so even though 2 mana 3-3 three, three looks big, dealing one damage to yourself is a significant downside. In the uncommons, we see Voltaic Visionary, which is a card that is quite powerful. It's a two-drop that can replace itself, and sorry, and grow in the process. So it's quite powerful and worth taking early. I think it's going to be my pick out of this pack. There's also Bleed Dry, which is unconditional removal, which is very, very premium in this set. So maybe I'm supposed to take Bleed Dry. Oh, there's also a Braid. I've been really, really impressed by um, like feeling like I need to have removal spells. So maybe I'm supposed to take a Braid over the Voltaic Visionary just so I can kill all of the key threats that come my way. Visionary seems quite good, but I think I'm just going to take the Abrade here. I, I've wanted, I've been telling myself to prioritize removal higher, and so I'm going to start doing it with this Abrade pick. And we'll see how that ends up working out. But I want to try new things and uh, see how different approaches can potentially work. Okay, so following up this Abrade pick, Curse of Hospitality is not a card I'm super high on. Um, just because as a rare, it's only very good in niche situations, which isn't necessarily what you want. You want cards that are good when you're behind and things like that. There's also, in this pack, there is, like, nothing that immediately jumps out to me as super powerful. Sigarda's Imprisonment is a removal spell, and I've been telling myself to prioritize those. Um, but there's also Blood Craze Socialite, which is another card I've really wanted to try out. This card hits like a truck, plays really well if you do get some blood tokens. The, there's no really red cards that really follow up a braid super well. Frenzy Devils is okay, but not great. So that leaves me, like, I kind of want to try out the Blood Craze Socialite. And then there's also, like, Weaver of Blossoms which is a pretty powerful three drop. I'm going to try the Blood Craze Socialite. It seems like a pretty good card, and I'm excited to, I'm interested in seeing how it performs. Okay, moving on to pick three. We see pretty good two drop if you get some Wolves, another Cigar to Imprisonment, an Evolving Wilds, which can be used to, like, splash something, maybe, if I need to. And then there's, like, Massive Might. I could see Sigarda's Imprisonment being correct. I have, been to, I have been wanting to see how these removal spells play out. There's a pretty solid two-drop, but I'm just going to take the removal spells over pretty much everything. I think most of my decks have really struggled from the fact that they can't really kill anything, and so when my opponent plays a really good rare, I have nothing to do against it. And so I'm just going to try taking the removal spells very highly. Even if this one is pretty vulnerable against exploit, maybe it performs better in the format, so we'll try it out. Okay. Here, there's another Cigar to Imprisonment. There's also Panicked Bystander, which is a pretty good two-drop. If I, like, in pretty much any of these color combinations, I have been seeing a decent amount of white. <sighs> And I do think this card is very powerful in the right deck. There's a Gluttonous Guest, which doesn't play the best with the Socialite, but it's fine with it. Belligerent Guest plays much better than the Gluttonous Guest with the Socialite. Especially with, like, Sure Strike. Hmm. I'm just going to take another Cigar as Imprisonment here. Take another removal spell. Oh, ho, 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 nice. And then we get Markov Waltzer, maybe indicating that we're supposed to end up in red-white. Other than that one Blood Craze Socialite pick, we're pretty set up for that. Three removal spells, which I've been really trying to get, and then a nice little gold card to pay me off. Plays well with things like Belligerent Guest. This card could be well if I am a little more controlling, but I'm probably going to end up aggressive. I'll just get the two drops later. I've been thinking about ways to combat huge amounts of rares. One of the ways is to be very aggressive and beat them before their rare can come down if it's a late game rare. But there are some early game rares that are quite powerful as well. And so having good removal spells is key to defeating those. I don't think the Heron Blessed Geist is particularly good. 
And the Festivity is not a card I'm a huge fan of. Kindly Grandmother can be really good against other aggro decks. The Hearse is also fine. And then there's like Pack Song Pup, which is pretty good. Seeing some good green cards. I'm just going to take the Kindly Ancestor. Hedge my bets against aggro. Hmm. Seeing a lot of green cards. I kind of wish I'd taken the pup now. Because the pup is quite good. This is a good two drop. This is a good removal spell. I'm just going to keep taking the removal. I do like the hook hand mentor. Mart Mariner though. Looks like red, white, or green, white's open. And since we have two Markov Walters now and the Abraid, we like wield the Retribution and the Wood Wolf. I'm going to lean towards red, white. Weaver of Blossoms, eh? There's also Markov Retribution. Voldaren Epicure. Which does get a little bit better with Markov Walter. I'm not going to miss an Epic here. Maybe I end up opening a green rare that I need to play, though. And then I can just play green white or something. And flash the Markov Waltzers. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to miss the Epic here, though. Could be okay. It might be better than I'm giving it credit for. Nurturing Presence, it's a flyer that also can buff a creature up. Flame Breather, not a particularly great two drop, but I do have a lot of non creatures right now. And then there's like Nature's Embrace if I really wanted to go deep on splashing, but I'll try this card out maybe. And we get a Ridge Wolf. Prisoner, not really in the market for that. I haven't wanted to try out the counter spell for a while. Last pick. Oakshade Stalker. Interesting. Okay, so we see a Thalia, which is pretty good. Can stall the opponents pretty well. We do have good reasons to be red white, and a good two drop is always a, a nice asset for a deck. I think even the green has looked open, but red white has also looked open. Maybe we just try to. Like, we also have these two Sigardas imprisonments. And now a Thalia. Very interesting. I'm just going to take the Thalia and then go in towards a red white direction, I think. I don't really have any plus one, plus one counter synergy. Fierce Retribution is removal, though. Can kill anything, which is good. Trying to get as much. Good removal into my deck or unconditional removal into my deck as possible. I'll probably wield the Ancestral Anger. Maybe I can do something with that. Though I'm probably just going to leave it on the sidelines. Traveling Minister is also a card I have my eye on. But we're just going to go for the all removal plan and see how that goes. Falcon Wrath Celebrants plays really well with all of the removal we have. It helps us not flood out. And it also just hits very hard. Also, Kindly Ancestor, but we already have one of those, and we're more of an aggressive deck. Leaning, so we don't care as much about the life gain. Hmm. Markov Waltzer, number three, over Fierce Retribution, number two. I think I'll do that. Yeah, I have the stats. Okay, so we've got a pretty solid deck here. We have one, two, three, four, four good removal spells right now. I wish I could take this Fierce Retribution. But we're just going to have to make do with our Markov Waltzer because this card's also good. And now our key components are just going to still be prioritizing these removal spells and then getting as many good creatures to curve into our Markov Waltzers as we can. I'm really liking this deck so far, though. I feel like very 
I don't know, like I'm going to be able to do good stuff against other aggressive decks. Oh my goodness. Well, I know I've said I'm going to be prioritizing two drops. I mean, uh, removal spells like this guy, but Get Twin Blade guy is just fantastic. It works great with like Falcon Wrath Celebrants. It works great with the Walter because Double Strike works really good with buffs. And putting this onto a Walter is still pretty good and or out of the Celebrants or really anything. So I really like Twin Blade Geist. And then we'll pass on the Sigardus Imprisonment, number three. We also need creatures, so this is a great pickup for our deck. Distracting Geist. We can tap creatures, or we can take another two drop. I think I'm more so in the market for two drops. How many do I have? I have one, two, three, three two drops right now. Distracting Geist is a pretty good card for an aggressive deck. So is the Drog Skull Infantry, though. I'm going to try the Distracting Geist. Wow, another Twin Blade Geist. That's incredible. I haven't gotten to play with this card, so... Part, part, part of my draft strategy, especially in the early days of the format, is to just try as many new cards as I can. And since I've never seen this card in play yet, I want to see how good it performs. Even though I'm willing to admit that it's not necessarily the perfect card in all spots. Okay, so Traveling Minister. I'm not sure how well it performs in the same deck as Markov Walter, because it doesn't like attack independently. But all of these buffs for my Twin Blade Geist seem pretty good. There's also another Celebrants. I kind of want to take the Celebrants. Just a top-end card that makes sure I never flood out. Now there's a Parish Blade Trainee. Also, arm the Cathars. Just want as many creatures, I think, as I can. There's also another Ancestral Anger. I kind of want to try this guy out, too. Seems kind of bad in the deck. I'm going to take the Arm the Cathars, because I have a couple Double Strike cards. I get the Minister. And it works really well with Double Strike, also with my Flying. And Menace. So we've got a great setup going into pack three. We have good removal. We have good power. Good creature curve so far with a good amount of two drops. Pack three and boom. Open up a fantastic uncommon. This pack's already off to a great start. And uh, not really else, anything else for us in this pack. So we kind of lucked out that we got this removal spell. So now I have... Let's move all our removal to the one pile. One, two. Got these four removal spells. I'm going to have five removal spells, which I think is more than I've had this entire format, kind of funnily. Um, and now we get the Rending Flame. So we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five removal spells. And then we have Arm the Cathars. It's kind of a. Not a creature. And then we have one, two, three, four creatures there. Then we have the curve. We're probably going to try and cut this Nurturing Presence just so we can get more creatures to play with our Waltzer. We only have room for so many non-creature, non-removal spells, and Arm the Cathars is our kind of powerful version of a buff spell. Also, the Ridge Wolf is pretty abysmal in our deck right now, so maybe we can get some two-drops to replace that. Especially if we can replace it with a white card. White two-drops would be premium. Okay, so the Blessed guys, which is okay in our deck because of our enchantments. Magma Pummel are also okay, but we're just going to take the Flame Blessed Bolt. Another good removal spell. Over Evolving Wilds. <sighs> I'm, I'm really excited to see how this deck plays out. We have a decent number of creatures. Great removal spell options right now. Whole pack to get a couple more two drops. Hopefully cut this thing. Okay. So this is not really the 4-drop I'm interested in. It's a 2-4, hard to flip for my deck. Griff Rider could be really good. Oh my gosh, my clicking punishes me. I need to just stop clicking on stuff until I get a new mouse. I think I was going to take the Griff Rider because I wanted to try it out anyway, but still kind of unfortunate that I didn't get to talk about the rest of those cards. Um, let's see. Shield Basher. I don't really need any more four drops. I could try the Epicure. 
that's kind of hard to cast in my colors because I'm heavier white. Still, maybe I'm supposed to try it. I'll just try the shield basher, maybe. Wow. Can't believe we're seeing this card. This card's fantastic. We were seeing a lot of green pack ones, so I'm not super surprised, but we're going to try the Heron, maybe. Or we could take... I don't know what we want out of this pack. Heron's pretty good against a lot of life if we do have buffs going. Sure, we'll take a second Ridge Wolf. Green looks very open here. There's also Lacerate Flesh, but at this point we have three, four, five, six removal spells, so we can probably get away taking another two drop. Wow, late a braid. Let's go. 16 creatures. And then a lot of removal. Oh my gosh, perfect. Voltaic Visionary is the great card for this deck. Another two drop. Resistance Squad plays well. Not really. We have you humans. This card would be fine, but easily just getting another good two drop. Let's just take the rare to build the collection. Not interested in any of these cards. I'm just taking the highest rarity card. Wow. So many good green cards late. We still ended up with a good deck, though. We want six two drops, I think. So we have those six. The Ridge Wolves only play well with each other. But that's just how it goes sometimes. You just do what you gotta do to get enough two drops. So we're pretty much playing removal, creatures, and uh, hoping for the best. We're going to cut the Nurturing Presence. I think we can afford to do that. I think we can also cut the Heron of Hope because we're not really a life gain deck and we have plenty of flying and four drops. Shield Basher is kind of high on my list of things I'd like to cut. Let's just think. Everything that's like, I mean, we have three four drops. Maybe one more isn't going to do too much damage for us. We should be fine once we get to five lands because we have the Cigardas Imprisonments to make blood and the Falcon Wrath Celebrant, so I'm happy playing 17 lands. Mm. This card can cost six, but other than that, we're pretty good. Griff Rider's one I wanted to try out. I think I'm going to cut the Shield Basher. I just don't like that it dies to like Flame Blast Bolt and stuff. Even if it is kind of a house with the uh, double strike. Does that mean I'm supposed to put more priority on it? I think I'd rather just put double strike on these things. Yeah, that's going to do it for the build here. Pretty straightforward. I'm really excited to try this deck out. I'll see you folks in the matches. Before I get to the games, I want to give a huge shout out to all of the patrons who support my content, my channel at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas and special shout out to those at the credits level. It is thanks to Patreon support that I'm able to make as many videos as I do. So if you found my videos to be of some value, maybe they've helped you win a couple of extra games on the arena ladder, or maybe you've crushed your FNM because of some of my advice and you want to help me continue making the videos, then Patreon is the best way to do so. And as my way of saying thank you, you even gain access to some pretty cool Patreon exclusive rewards, like access to my card by card grade spreadsheet, my tier list for Crimson Vow, which is an excellent bonus resource to help you crush your competition, especially early on in the format when a lot of people don't know how to evaluate the cards. But anyway, I do hope you are enjoying the video so far, regardless of whether or not you decide to become a patron. And without further ado, let's get to the games. Welcome to round number one. We have a hand that I'm not going to keep because we need Mountain too badly. This hand is much better. We will keep it and we will ditch. So this can make these into 4-4. Four, four. And a 3-3, three, three, that's just 14 points of damage. I'm going to cut the Falcon Wrath Celebrants from this hand. I'm like one creature away from just like dumpstering everyone with this hand. And just hitting for millions of damage. Because of the way that Double Strike is with Arm the Cathars. So 
So we played the Twin Blade guys, and then played another Twin Blade guys, and then played the Markov Waltzer and just hit for eight. Okay, looks like we're in a racing situation, which should be very good for my hand. Just gonna play this because it's more mana efficient. And it's gonna help me win this race. Double striker. I could have cigar his imprisonment did this, but it can't really block my stuff, and I still think I'm gonna win this race pretty easily. I could have a counter spell here. Sure. So next turn I can go plus three, plus two, plus one, and have them all have vigilance as well. Boom, let's go. I was trying to like maybe bait out a counter spell. Got the win. Huge. Being aggressive gives you a lot of extra tools. Like, I wasn't really afraid of any rare they had, because I just kill it and move on. I think Sigarda's Imprisonment is probably... A lot of the times, these enchantment removal spells have been disappointing in the past few sets, but it might just be a key card in this set, because you need to be able to kill stuff. But we'll see, we'll see. Stumbled a little bit. They had a counter spell, but they also missed a key turn. I don't know what they were holding up. Maybe card draw? I'm glad I took the arm to Catharis. That card seems very good in the deck with all the double strikers and stuff. And I'm also glad I have some lifelink. Great hand. Two drop, three drop, four drop on the draw or the play. I don't remember which one I'm on. Boom, boom, boom. I'm just gonna order a new mouse today, I think, so I don't get wrecked by the double click thing. It is well worth it. Using my Mirage Lands, Lucky Charm. This is a great hand. This is pretty much the ideal, like, aggro start, I think. And I can buff up this and the Markov Waltzer itself, or the Distracting Geist. Oh, yeah, this has haste regardless. This is insane. Feels good. The waltzer is pretty good. That's a little bit backbreaking, I'm not gonna lie. Luckily these kind of disturbed, so I'll be able to give something double strike. Just unfortunate. The way things are working out here. Just want to exile that. Oh, my gosh. Maybe I was supposed to wait, but I just wanted to maybe cut them off their color and get a blood token.
If I can find it in Braid, I can win. There we go. I was debating whether or not to just exile their imprisonment, but I think putting them to three is pretty nice. Because if they don't have another removal spell or a removal spell, they can kill this guy. I attack. Tap this. They have to double block. I kill both. If you could have Wolf Strike, oh, that's a problem, eventually. In five, they go up to eight. Nope, they're dead exactly. Got him. Let's go. Putting this thing on that guy actually kind of worked out because of the way my mana ended up going, but it would have been better if I had just maybe not done that. Hmm. Got there. Let's go. That was a big win. Disturb is so powerful. They had, like... That was one of those games where, it, like... It was really close because they had the perfect answer for what I was doing a few turns in a row. Like, they had the combat trick. They had the deal one. And it wiped two of my creatures. To, like, shut off my aggression a little bit. But I still was able to punch through those last points of damage. Thanks to the Menace guy, which I really do like. I think there's a good top end card. On the draw, I think I need to be a little bit faster out of the gates than this. Because I don't have a guaranteed two drop with early plays. We did see one of the weaknesses of the Zagardas imprisonment that game, though. Salia, bum 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 ba. -da. Perfect. That was a card I was thinking about because if I play that, I can buff up the Thalia and itself, and then the Thalia will trigger the training on Griff Rider. I think shutting that thing down is pretty nice. Stops the training on the trainee. Play it slow. Okay, the minister is fine. We'll just we'll just play and blast bolted. Okay. 
Getting wrecked by my own Thalia here. If I'd drawn a land, it wouldn't have been a real problem, because I would have been able to attack, maybe. It's not good. Just totally dominated by my own Thalia. Kind of the opposite of what I want to have happen. My deck is a lot of non-creature spells, but... That's just super far from ideal. Kind of unlucky, to be honest. Oh my gosh. Land, let's go. I may have put myself dead on board. I didn't do the math. Plus one, plus one. So I don't think quite. I think I live at one. Oh no, because they get a training trigger. Could beat. One, two, one, two, three, four. I die exactly. Yeah. I was hoping to be able to live, obviously. But I don't think I could have beaten this card overall anyway. That's just how it goes. Oh my gosh, I've been trying to play around all the rares I could have, but that was just... I got screwed. I mulliganed, got wrecked on lands, and then... Um, like, if, I, if I'd been able to play my creature, I would have been able to be on the aggressive side of things, and then... Um, my Thalia would have been less of a downside, because it was nice that it stalled their rare for a while. But, I, um, uh, couldn't hit my fourth land on time. I had to mulligan. I had to pitch the extra land when I mulliganed. Jeez, this hand is no bueno. I don't have both colors. This is much better. Sad to have to ditch that card, because I'm sure it'll make a difference in whether or not I win this game, but... Please hit a fourth land, Nikolai. You can do it. Summon it to the top of my deck. There we go. Could have a combat trick, but I'm just gonna assume that they didn't attack because they would have died, and if they could have attacked, they would have attacked. And now I'm off to the races. Good couple removal spells in hand. Got the geist. No. And we'll get exiled. Thanks. They're both essentially 4-mana 3-3 three, three haste flyers because they buff two creatures if you can get them to trigger on other things. Got the win. They stumble a bit, and we just come in with the punish.
Our deck is pretty powerful. I mean, w one indication is that the deck we lost to had two very strong rares, and we also stumbled on mana, and kind of all of that was relevant <laughs> to us losing it. But yeah, I'm liking the deck. I think the Menace guys are really good at the top end. Like, those are probably above replaceable. Um, I kind of started out of the format with like, okay, the only cards that I really care about prioritizing are cheap cards. But now I'm kind of like adjusting to like which cards feel like they have a good home in the format. I'm gonna have I have to keep this hand. Uh, it's not ideal, but I have a lot of creatures in the deck, and I also like four spells, both my colors. I'm not gonna do better than that on average with six cards, just because going down a resource is huge, as we've seen. <sighs> and I have the tools to, like, answer some early threats. I will stall them with my Fierce Retribution, I think. They'll probably just discard a card. This card's pretty immune to removal in that way. It's just nice that they get to just only lose one resource, but I'm essentially playing this as a two-mana make them discard a card. And I don't want to fall behind, so I'll just do that. And that'll give me a way to get rid of the sixth land. As you can see, the imprisonment not really doing all that I wanted to do. This guy can't block there anyway because of the destroy vampire claws. Kind of bad to attack. Next turn I can go visionary and imprisonment this or something. on the 3-1. Or, that's just better. I'm going to hold back the Markov Waltzer here because I can't win if they kill the Celebrants right now. Whereas I have a very slim chance if I can like block the 3-1 or something. It's really bad if they kill the Celebrants though. Next turn, I can use my Cigar as Imprisonment and play the Visionary. This card has been very impressive. This card's annoying here, too, because I have a vampire. thinking about the cards that they could have. Only that attacking is good. It means they don't have a combat trick. Because plus two plus two would have just wrecked me there. I guess I should have used a blood token first. But I feel pretty locked into this line. Don't think I'm going to be flipping this. I'm probably going to use it to trade with this vampire slayer. Oh, that's a problem. Hmm.
That's great draws. I can't afford to activate that ever this game. So I won't attack with that. Can I send for five? Can't attack with that. If I tell him to revive, so like double block. I'll jump with this, then they'll make this into a 3 3. And then I have a route to victory where I top deck a burn spell. Oh, they can't even do this unless they use their whole mana. I think I need to start attacking. Because I am at five, and this thing's really impossible for me to deal with right now. Actually, no, it's not impossible to deal with. I'll be fine. I'll double block at this turn with these two. Just what the doctor ordered. They have four creatures. I have three, but mine are way better than theirs. Or maybe not way better. This, These two are pretty good. Okay. Oh. I want to let this flip. So if I attack with this thing, it is for 10 damage. See, I told you that mulliganing and getting rid of the arm, the Cathars, would be a big deal. If I had Arm the Cathars here, I'd be in such good shape because I could get a massive attack in and leave my guy back on blocks. So I'd be able to eat two of their creatures. Oh, that's tough. So they have one, two, three, four, five, six attackers. I can send in for 12 here. I'll have three blockers. I go jump hook hand, eat that guy, block there, take one, two, three, one, two. I can go jump, 
block there. Block there. I'm gonna take one, two, three, four, five. Rats. One, two, so I block here, here, here. One, two, three, four, five. That's a good card to have. We're getting close to Alpha Strike range. I'm gonna go empty handed so that I can And it's really funny because I actually would be winning this game if I could give this thing Vigilance for a turn. But now I can start exiling these things and I can ditch the extra lands. No, I think I'm dead. Yeah, I think I'm dead on board based on my math from before where I lost a blocker. That's tough. I was doing a good job filtering through my draw, which was a little bit more awkward than theirs, because they just drew five lands and, like, all spells. Let's just block for the sake of blocking, seeing if I miscounted, but I didn't miscount. Dang it. I gave it the old college try. Just tough sometimes. I needed to draw a little bit more action relative to what I did. I was also, I had an awkward opening hand. I try to think of things I could have done differently. Um, I think I played that game pretty well. Gave myself the best chance I could, I think. Obviously, it would have been better if I could have had earlier creatures and then not had to use my removal so aggressively. <laughs> There is some chance that I wasn't supposed to spend turn two, like, making them discard a card. But it looked like it would kind of had an impact on them. Because they discarded a land and then they never hit their fifth land for a while. Probably made things slower for them, but they just... I don't know. The, dis the killing an attacking creature would have been good. Okay, we'll keep this. Four lands, both are colors. Sign me up. They get a free attack if they want. Oh no. I'm gonna try to flip this next turn. I can cast pretty much every spell. I only have the one Falcon Wrath Celebrants and the one destroy target attacking creature. Gets me a nice 4-3 ahead of schedule. And I don't have a particularly good play for this next turn.
probably the worst card that wasn't one of the two that I mentioned that I could have hit. I do get to hit him for eight, but that card is much better when you can uh, line it up instead of just casting at sorcery speed as a, as a play to flip your guy. Do get in eight damage this turn if they have nothing here. Okay, so I turned it into a removal spell essentially. Sure. Traded with a card. Good job, full charge, Berserker. You've done well. Next time I get the celebrants down, and then I'll be able to imprisonment to my heart's content. Ah! This thing can still attack, though, which is nice. Certainly blocking that guy. Drain their mana if I can. Oh, I could almost get, like, double strike, double strike. That's a surprise, surprise, but giving this double strike is going to be good enough, I think. And then I can Sigurd his imprisonment something, though. I'm definitely seeing... I, this card definitely has a ton of downside. Um, do I want to time walk them? I don't really care. No. I make them use their mana to trade this. It's not really a time walk. This thing is very good with the Twin Blade guys that I have, and I can Sigurd his imprisonment any big play they make this turn. Killing the Taxidermist gives me a lot of confidence to do that as well. Line seems to indicate they don't have a removal spell because otherwise that would have been lethal on next turn if they had removal. I'm just going to do that, get rid of a 4 4 essentially. They still get the ability, but now they have to be more careful and they can't just like one shot me with a combat trick. Goodbye, blood token. I hardly knew ye. Let's see what we find here. That is unfortunate that they got rid of that second blood token. Huh. So I can force them to double block kill both of their creatures. Have an empty board for my Twin Blade Geist. Be slightly ahead. Higher life total. Because as it stands, if they have one removal spell, I'm in a little bit of trouble. Could have hit a, hit a removal spell there, but great. Could have also tried to, like, use that thing. Just gonna play this land so I can maybe sack the blood token and still find something relevant. Okay, well, luckily we're going to be able to get rid of this thing. 
Not going to take any chances here. And we still set up for the Falcon Wrath kill soon. I just don't want them to just one-shot me. Obviously, if they have a second Ancient Lumber Knot, I'm in trouble, but... Putting yourself dead to one removal spell when you can avoid it is generally inadvisable. So I have a lethal threat. I should have sacked the blood token on my turn because I have the one drop minister. What was I thinking? I mean, I, I just clicked through it as I was talking <laughs> instead of just doing it. Blood tokens are really good for not flooding out. I'm really liking the Falcon Wrath Celebrant right now. Nice. Menace. This just card is really performing well. This is why I like trying out new cards, because you never know when you're just gonna play a card and it's just gonna be like, wow, this card is exactly what I need it to be. I've been enjoying having plentiful removal. And if it is of the mediocre variety in the terms of, like, imprisonment and stuff. Yes! Victory! Victory! Oh, victory! It feels so good to win you. And when I get an extra win, my gem count grows, my rank ascends. Oh, victory! Oh, victory! Da, 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 da. Ho ho, four wins, nice. The threshold. So far I have yet to get more than four wins, but I'm feeling good. Feeling good in the best way. Let's go. Oh yes. The old Geist. The Twin Blade. We're on the draw, but Twin Blade is fantastic. This card's been really performing. I, I was really high on this card going into the set, and I have been very impressed. It's just like, must deal with threat every time. I'm still gonna play this over the Griff Rider. Oh my gosh, Max punished. Um, wrecked. Goodbye, Windblade Geist. You will be missed. Do, 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 do. It's been a long, cold, lonely winter. Wow, they're attacking me. Interesting. Aye! So I can make this into a... No, I'm just gonna... Pull the classic waltzers, getting in for three. And then next turn I can imprisonment this thing. Get in for oodles of damage. Oh, they're attacking me. Wow, this is a weird race to see. I would think they would not want to race me here. I can trade this for that. Three, five, seven. Barring some insane circumstance, I don't see how they can deal an extra. I mean, they could have two sure strikes as their last two cards. Please. Why? No. No, I was gonna do so well to get past the four win threshold. The threshold game, don't you understand?
The threshold! <laughs> oh, why? I was like, man, what could they possibly have that could ever get them out of this situation? Oh, I could have won. Could I have won this game if I had... I mean, I was dead by a, a five damage. Let's just say I, instead of playing this guy, I'm just like, okay. The thing was, was I was hoping they would like try to play one, like hold back one blocker and I could like use this guard as imprisonment then. I was at like 13. I was totally chilling. They had seven power. So I was dead to two sure strikes, but they had like three cards in hand. <laughs> two cards in hand at the time they drew a card for draws dip. Obviously they were planning for that. That's why they were racing so aggressively. But like, am I supposed to play around them having this extra turn card? Hmm. And then I could have cigar as this thing. I'm at 13. They attack me for four, take an extra turn, attack me for four more, and I live. Oh, man. But this card, like, ensures that they die, because I then have a menace creature. Well, I could have played the Imprisonment and the Ridge Wolf. But I thought I was going to have to Imprisonment this thing. Because if they start holding back blockers, it gets awkward. Jeez Louise. Maybe that was obvious. Maybe it was just like, oh, obviously they have to take an extra turn. Not, I don't even think that rare is that good. Just happened to just dominate me there. Ugh. Oh, I thought I was going to get their little red-white deck. Thought we were going to get there together. But unfortunately, we were not able to, Walter. We will have to wait for the next draft to get past four wins. I really liked this one, though. Lots of good takeaways. Um, basically, no rares in this deck. I mean, Thalia doesn't really count, because the one time I played it, it hosed me more than the opponent, it felt like. Um, but pretty much just prioritizing those removal spells, getting like late signals to figure out where to go from there. But like just taking the early abrades, taking the Sigarda's imprisonments, despite them being quite awkward, and then just figuring out a direction. Let's say, um, dist Distracting Geist performed very well in the games that I had it. Felt like a very relevant card, and I was glad I tried that one out. Griff Rider was mediocre. This card performed great. I really liked having that at the Curve Topper. Falconrath Celebrants, excellent card. I'm really looking forward to playing this card more, especially because it looks a little bit maybe medium, um, but the card performs great. Two Blood Tokens is so much. Just makes it so you just like draw extra action. The Twin Blade guy's fantastic. Won me so many games with the Double Strike. The Braid was good. Ridge Wolf was basically useless in my deck, but it could be good in red-green decks. I just had it needed more two drops. Retribution only drew it like once, and it was okay. It, like wasn't good against the three one. Maybe I should have saved it. Traveling Minister, pretty reasonable card. I didn't draw it ever, but I can. I would have been happy to have it in an opening hand. I think. Um, Arm the Cathars, massive with the double strike. Pretty good card, I think. This card was pretty good against the aggro mirrors. And Visionary did good work. So, cool deck. Unfortunately, we did not manage to get past four wins. But, I mean, I, I was doing my best there. I think I uh, I lost a couple of really close ones to just stumbles and having slight issues with mulligans or draws. Or them having the extra turn there. <laughs> ah, thwarted by the extra turn. That's hilarious. But yeah, if you did make it all the way to the end of this video and you're watching on YouTube, I guess the only spot you could have watched it because I recorded this just for you folks. Remember to hit that thumbs up button to let me know you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel for more draft content and comment below with your questions, thoughts, and feedback. You can also click the little bell icon if you do subscribe so that you get notified when I post future videos. And if you made it all the way to the end, be sure to, in the comment section down below, leave hashtag it takes two to tango or hashtag may I have this dance to let me know you made it all the way to the end of the video. It's always fun to see in the comments section which folks made it to the end. So hashtag it takes two to tango. Um, and uh, yeah, pretty exciting one. Four wins. I, I've been running into that wall, but eventually I will break through that wall and it will be incredible. And four wins is nothing to scoff at. I've been, I had pretty solid decks and I'm really happy I got to draft this one. Uh, you can also, if you want to support my content, if you've been enjoying my videos, you found them to be of some value. Maybe you're getting some extra wins because of them. Um, be sure to check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. It's a couple bucks a month, less than a cup of coffee, or um, like basically, it's like the equivalent of having, if you took all of the quarters that you get as change for a month and then put them in one place, that's probably, uh, you can like a dollar a month, a couple dollars a month, it really just help, goes a long way towards helping me make more videos. And if you found them helpful, then that's a good way to show your appreciation. And you gain access to my card by card tier list for Crimson Vow when you do become a patron. So uh, you can gain access to a bonus resource that I do update as I 
learn more about the card. So, for example, Falcon Wrath Celebrants is going up on my list, and uh, some of these other cards are going to be moving around as well. You can also find a bunch of free stuff in the comment section, uh, not the comment, the description down below as well, like my Discord server, the Nikolai Bulls Twitter, if you want to follow there to get notifications when I post new videos. And uh, you can also find the Nikolai Bolas articles, my merchandise, if you want to support me that way, you can get some cool stuff, um, like a mug or a shirt or a hoodie or a sticker, that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, cool stuff in the description down below, all of it linked. If you have Amazon Prime, you can even support my content at no extra cost to yourself. Simply link your Amazon account and your Twitch account, um, and then you can use a Prime gaming subscription on my channel. Even if you don't use Twitch, it's free to make an account, and it all goes towards the same pool of content. So. That's always appreciated for the folks that take the extra minute to do it. It's really easy to set up. But yeah, that is going to do it for this draft video. We'll get past four wins eventually, and you'll be here to see it when we do. And I will talk to you next time.